yourself. Take it steady. I can't see your side You're at all. You're okay, my side. Oh. Our Kahuna story today takes us way back in time, long before the supercars roared into action, before even I was born. Because this is a Porsche 356, a magical link between the Volkswagen Beetle and the Porsche 911, which is still being produced to this very day. Ferdinand Porsche had set up his design business back in 1931, working on a wide variety of engineering projects, including the fabled Beetle. But it was his son, also named Ferdinand, but better known as Ferry, who brought project number 356 to life. And Porsche's first production car of their own began rolling off the line in 1948 and stayed rolling off the line for the next 17 years by which time its replacement, the iconic 911, had been launched. The 911 was actually project number 901, and it was launched with that model name back in 1964. But Peugeot quickly complained because they had the naming rights to all models with an O in the middle of the number. So, 911 it had to be. Over those 17 years, Porsche produced some 76,356s, in coupe, convertible and speedster specifications, with the original car being slowly upgraded to A, B and then C variations. This is a 1957 356A, but it's much more than that because this is a Carrera GS model, so named to celebrate the class victories in the famous Carrera Panamericana race across Mexico in the early 50s and it brought the 356 a more powerful quad cam motor, which upped the power from some 60 horsepower to more like 100 horsepower, lowering the 0 to 62 time by four seconds to 11 and a half seconds, and upping the top speed from around 99 miles an hour to 126. The GS model is the luxury version for continental cruising, but they also made a GT version stripped down for racing with a lightweight interior and perspect instead of glass. The overall concept was, unsurprisingly, very similar to that of the Beetle. Rear-wheel drive with an air-cooled flat-four engine hung out behind the rear wheels. And somehow, it worked. This car is for sale at Hangar 136 on the Kahuna platform, connecting buyers, sellers and dealerships. Hangar 136 is a new venture set up on the Vista Heritage site in 2022 by Ollie Gatland Pendleton and Lawrence Pawson, in association with Hero ERA, and offering a diverse range of classic and modern classic cars. Ollie was the man who volunteered to sit beside me for a drive in the Porsche. This is all a bit plush, isn't it's it? Not too bad, is it? Isn't? Has this all been fully restored? Fully restored 10 years ago by uh, Max did Page. Yeah. And uh, yeah, not used a huge amount since. Oh. So as you can see, it's pretty well Carpets. pretty well put together and surprisingly spacious. Oh. Two tall people. Yeah. On, yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> and this stereo is lovely, lovely. We'll crank it up then. Oh. Oh. Fuel oh. pumps on, oh. left. Fuel pump. Oh, blimey. Ignition on, what? centre. Well, this one. Next one. That one up here? Yeah. Oh, that's a bit difficult to get to. Right. Give it now a couple what? of pumps. On the throttle pumps, yeah. And then push and turn. Push and turn with the key? Yeah. That's <laughs> a bit complicated, eh? <laughs> there she goes. <laughs> it's not quite the excitement of a V12, is it, when it's, you know? It's a slightly different time. Now, now on it, could, could you not have got bigger doors to your showroom here? I, I know, know, it is a bit of a problem it's quite for a us, low as long as you this. take yourself, take it steady. I can't see your side You're at all. You're okay, my side. Oh, flipping hell. That's all right, keep yourself going. I'm, I'm waiting for the wheels to be up all that day. <laughs> now, straight out from here. Watch that bollard on the left, there you go. <laughs> A bit posh and bister heritage, isn't it? With all the <laughs> restoration gets quite a thing. It's grown, hasn't it, massively? Yeah, some over 50, 50 or so businesses on site now. Everything from upholsterers to 
WO Bentley restorers <laughs> to classic car dealers to great place to be. Steering sort of heavy but positive. The steering feel I think on these early 356s is just beautiful. It's so tight, so direct, very little play. I've got my seat back for my knees and legs, but the gear lever's a long way forwards, isn't it? Yeah. 1950s ergonomics, that. Now, I haven't got much power, but I haven't got very good brakes, so I presume a drum The brakes all are, as we would say, of the period. <laughs> uh, in, the, in their day, I think they were fairly well put together, but uh, yeah, certainly compared to anything modern nowadays, leaves a lot to be desired. I mean, the gearbox itself is actually quite vague, as a lot of the early Porsche gearboxes were, but synchros on all four gears, as soon as you got used to it for a little bit, it's actually a really nice thing to use. The great thing is, you don't have to go fast to have a smile on your face. Absolutely. <laughs> if anything, it's preferred. Uh, but yeah, these things feel as fun at 50 miles an hour yeah. as uh, anything does, really. So you drive an F50 Ferrari and you accelerate so you have a huge smile, but just tick it over with this, I mean, this wonderful steering wheel puts yeah. this but the Porsche badge in the middle. Is this the horn? <laughs> Yes. That's quite I, think, nice. I think they nabbed that from a train. Yeah. <laughs> so is this like a completely original spec? Well, it's a, an original matching numbers car. Right. Um, but when the owner decided to restore the car ten years ago, um, he opted to add some kind of tasteful GT upgrades. Right. With original parts sourced from Christoph Tanner in in Switzerland, the 356 expert. Um, so it's got GT lightweight bumpers. It's got oil cooler, it's got the oil cooling ducts, it's got the side trims and he also managed to source an original set of five Rudge knockoff wheels which were an option at the time but are now... Well, is, that, is that a Rudge knockoff? Then? Rudge knockoff. Is that the yeah. bee's knees and Yeah wheels? and you know you've seen the car, it really sets it off well um, but they're you know a fantastically expensive thing to source <laughs> oh, really? now so he shipped them in from the States. So um, they're original 50s wheels? They're original not 50s, but they're not oh, repros, really? oh, no. Blimey. But to find a set in this sort of condition, five of them, so it's got the spare wheel in the front, um, yeah, I think it just really adds to the car's look. So what revs have I got then? There's a green at 4,000, is that when it Yeah, gets green at 4,000 is where you need to be. Uh, anything four to six is uh, where the, the engine really Punching finds the its horsepower Yeah, exactly. But you know, it's a, it's a race derived engine, so uh, that's kind of where it's happiest, is up in the rev range, where you get a lot of the power and torque. The Carrera Panamericana. Imagine exactly. driving one of these across Mexico through rough roads. Well, quite. Braver man than I, for yes. sure. That was an amazing race. I think it won Le Mans in 1950 as well, didn't it, or something? Yeah, class I remember. win. Class yeah. win as well. And this is where Porsche began, you know, there's now we think of the Le Mans winners of Porsche 917s and 956s and well, 962, and this is where it all started. The 550 Spider and the 718, it's where it built its reputation, isn't it, on quality and durability. So what was the, the, the Jimmy Dean 550 Spider? Was that the little bastard. the 356, or was that a completely different car? So the 550 Spider was the car for which this firm and designed four cam engine was originally put together. Right. Um, it's a very complicated design, there are no belts or chains, it's all sprocket driven drives oh, and uh, bezels and oh. pinions and stuff. So you wouldn't want to over rev it then would you? you well, the, <laughs> the thing is about these engines, they are actually very, once they're set up properly, they're actually a very reliable unit. I mean they had to be, to race in the Panamericana, oh, yeah, yeah. you couldn't have something that was going to go pop. But if they do go wrong, there are not that many people in the world that are qualified to put them together that well. So that can be where the, uh, the bank balance gets tested. But so was this engine rebuilt when the car was it rebuilt? It was, thankfully, in uh, 2011, shortly after the current owner acquired the car, he commissioned uh, Pearl Porsche to do a full engine rebuild. Um, and so, yeah, the car runs absolutely brilliantly. And the gearbox itself was rebuilt by, by Pril actually only a couple of years ago. Um, on some of these 356s, people can have problems with the uh, the synchros. So it's nice to know that the gearbox in this is properly put together. I might need some windscreen wipers. Just above the key ignition. Whoa. There we go. 
Fourth gear is quite tall on this, so uh, quite low revs at kind of motorway speeds. It's getting a bit warm in here, is it? Yeah. Do we have air conditioning or something? Sadly, aircon wasn't a thing in 1957. We have uh, a fully overhauled heating system though, but we don't need right. that today. But, but where, what's this, what's this knob in the middle? Well, that Heater screen. knob, yeah, that will make us warmer. Oh, great. What, yeah. what makes us open the windows? Potentially. <laughs> So uh, what's the, you know, the, the weird things to look out for when you're looking for a 356? Is it just that engine certificate? Well, I think with any 60-year-old with any car, there are the obvious things to look out for. You've got to look out for rust, previous accident damage, yeah. oil leaks, all those sorts of things, healthy running engine smoke, all the rest of it. Uh, and thankfully, 356s don't really suffer from anything more than any other 60-year-old car would. You know, as I said, if the engines are set up properly, they will go on forever. You've just got to look after them as you would anything. Um, but yeah, no, they're remarkably reliable units. What about the left-hand drive? Did they make right-hand drive versions? They did. I think uh, of the 447, I think it was, about 10 were right-hand drive. So finding one of those is a very rare thing. Right. Um, so that would put the value up? Well, it would put the value up in the UK, but the UK is a smaller market for, um, for these cars. So. It's, it's, you know, comparable. So if you're looking for a Porsche 356A Carrera GS, chassis number 100830, then Hangar 136 is the place to go.